Ever heard of a docile crocodile? How about a chill crocodile? No? Well, that's not surprising, as the extremely laid-back Siamese crocodile has almost completely disappeared from the wild. In today's episode of RZSS Goes Wild Genes, we'll be finding out how an unlikely combination of conservation genetics and crocodile leather farms are coming together to help save this critically endangered crocodilian, and how wild genes are helping conserve crocodiles in Cambodia. Siamese crocodiles are one of the calmest and rarest species of crocodilian. Revered by some as ancestral spirits, but hunted by others to the brink of extinction, this species was once widespread across Southeast Asia. Today, as a result of poaching for leather and a widespread habitat loss, it's now restricted to just one mountain range in Cambodia. Dr. Alex Ball, our RZSS Wild Genes Programme Manager, is working with our partners to help save this species in country. On the Crocodile Project, we've been working with Fauna and Flora International and the Royal University of Phnom Penh. In terms of the numbers of Siamese crocodiles that are left, uh, it's thought to be between three and 400, but there's a reintroduction programme that's now ongoing to try and boost those numbers, both in that remaining population in the Cardamom Mountains, but also into other areas where the species has already gone extinct. Fauna and Flora International, working on the ground in Cambodia, uh, are visiting and working with crocodile leather th farms in the region to potentially source crocodiles that can be used to release back into the wild and also to boost the Siamese crocodile numbers. And the reason that they are focusing on the leather farms is because there's, there's thousands of Siamese crocodiles within these farms. So there's way more of these crocodiles in captivity in leather farms than there are in the wild now. Whereas the leather farms were a really big problem for Siamese crocodiles and do still potentially have a risk associated with them, they can now be used to help protect and preserve the crocodile into the future. And that's, that's the hope for this project that we're working on at the moment with the partners in Cambodia. One problem, in crocodile farms, crocodiles are purposefully hybridised, so different species are bred together, like Siamese crocodiles being bred with saltwater crocodiles to improve leather quality. But that's really problematic when we want to reintroduce Siamese crocodiles back into the wild. It's really difficult to tell hybrids from Siamese crocodiles by eye, and getting it wrong could be disastrous for Siamese crocodile conservation you can have potential problems with those hybrid offspring. They might not be adapted to freshwater habitats or saltwater habitats. Another difference between Siamese crocodiles and the other species that are kept within captivity in these crocodile farms are the behaviours. So Siamese crocodiles are really docile. They very rarely attack humans and they're very small crocodiles. This is really contrasting to the reputation of these other two species. So Cuban crocodiles are known as one of the most aggressive crocodile species in the world uh, and so are saltwater crocodiles. If we're going in there and releasing crocodiles that are known for aggressive tendencies, uh, that's not going to be successful for the communities that live there and for the crocodiles. Luckily, the Wild Genes team are specialist conservation geneticists and experts at translating conservation genetic data into practical conservation action. So this is where we have to use genetics to dig into the detail. We've created the first conservation genetic laboratory in Cambodia and since 2016 we've been going out to the Royal University of Phnom Penh to conduct training sessions to transfer techniques that will help them answer the questions of conservation priorities in their country. So it's one of the key projects that we have used uh, to train the lab technicians over in Cambodia up that we developed the test here at Edinburgh Zoo that could differentiate between saltwater and Siamese crocodiles and then took it over to Cambodia for them to test co crocodiles within their country. Conservation Genetics Laboratory at the Royal University of Phnom Penh screens uh, samples from farmed crocodiles that are collected by FFI from Fauna and Flora's uh, Breeding for Release program. But it's really doing two things at once and that's what we really like to do at Wild Genes. We are transferring skills over and also help tackling conservation priorities uh, in a region that really needs it. So, it looks like there is a reason to smile for this particular crocodile. Conservation genetic data is being translated into real-world conservation action, ensuring that the future of this species is very bright indeed. <laughs> <laughs>